Hello and welcome to the continuation of Chapter 4 of The Legend of Nobunaga. Today we're going to head out and uh, face the Siege of Sakai, the level is called. I said last time it's a semi-historical battle and uh, I might want to up that a little bit to say it's a, I don't know, like a three-quarters historical battle. I don't know, It's um, it depends what sources you read and I'll talk about that when we're in there. We can see the enemy commander is Amalia Van Kier, so we know something weird's going on here because that's not a Japanese name. Something's going strange here. So he calls it the Free City of Sakai, and uh, Sakai was an interesting place, which we'll talk about when we're in there. He must be defeated if we are to end the chaos. Begin your preparations. Sir! Note that he says he, even though Amalia, you'd think, is a female name. But then I guess uh, <laughs> if you're Japanese, you don't know that because. Uh, I believe Amalia is supposed to be Spanish or something, or Portuguese maybe. Sakai has been gathering mercenaries. I hear they even have foreigners. They also say that Tatsuoki Saito is saying he'll have his revenge. Well, not that he matters much. <laughs> Basically. Lady Kicho hadn't let Tatsuoki get away. Lady Kicho? Lady Kicho wouldn't do anything to betray our lord? A woman's heart's very complex. Not that you would have any idea what I'm talking about. Burned. Huh? So Yoshino is just being a contrarian just for fun. Meanwhile over in Honoji, Nobunaga and Kicho are sitting around by the looks of things. Kicho is looking pretty casual. You are lovely. <laughs> Such a good scoring <laughs> line. <laughs> and everyone finds it pretty hilarious. That's our lord. He accepts everyone as they present themselves, you know. That's one of the things that makes him different from us. That reminds me of something. So many fanboys. Monkey once told me that our lord's eyes were the eyes of a hero. Oh, get a rub. Like Come on. What are you all fooling around for? The war council starts as soon as our lord returns. You'd better make sure you're all ready. At least Mori's taking this seriously. Although he's a bit of a party pooper. What a lamer. So I guess it's time for the War Council for this battle. Let's see what sort of thing the game has for us. All right, let's begin. We have plans to make. Our scouts have come back with the following reports. So let's see. It's a town level, which is really annoying. Lots of corridors to deal with. In this battle, we must defeat four commanders that the merchants of Sakai have hired. The four commanders are as follows. Maguichi Saiga of the Saiga group. Who? Zendayu Momochi of the Iga group. Maybe. Our old foe, Tatsuoki Saito. No way. And finally, a foreign commander by the name of Amalia Van Kiri. Definitely made up. So these enemy commanders are just sort of a hodgepodge of not particularly historical characters. My, my lord. Who knows what these foreign troops will throw at us? We must be wary. Indeed. Don't give up the fight before we even start. Don't worry, my spear can handle whatever they send at us. I find that line vaguely euphemistic. My lord, but anyway. For this battle? So we're facing four enemy commanders. Uh, we had that Amalia girl who uh, we'll be seeing on the battlefield. Uh, a couple of other guys. We had Saiga Maguichi or something. I think he's supposed to be based on one of the characters who led a religious uprising against Nobunaga. Um, it's like. Saiga Maguichi is an alternative name for some other guy. I forget his name actually. He was the leader of one of the uh, the eco revolutions, which are semi famous. Um, who else did we have? We had Sandayu Momochi, who was the other random commander. I th he is a historical character actually. He is uh, he was like a sensei for ninja in the Aiga province. I think he is. The only thing he's really famous for is he he trained a guy, uh, well, a sort of semi historical character called uh, Ishikawa Goemon, who is sort of like the Japanese version of Robin Hood. He was this guy who famously went around uh, taking money from the rich, giving it to the poor. You can see here I actually, for the first time, decided to check the stats of units before putting them down. So you can see I uh, gained a little bit more seriousness in playing the game. I do okay in this level, but uh, it's not the best playthrough. Um, yeah, so he was famous for training Ishikawa Goemon. Goemon's pretty cool because he tried to kill Hideyoshi in his later life, uh, but he failed, and Hideyoshi had him boiled alive at his pu as his punishment. I think um, this is a sidebar, but I think Ishikawa Goemon, when he's boiled alive, his son was put into the boiling pot with him 
but he like held him above the water as he died to stop his son dying. And I believe Hideyoshi then forgave his son and allowed him to live as a result of his father's uh, bravery in saving him. So that's sort of nice. May not be a true story, but that's the story of Goemon. <laughs> it was partially related as the student of Sandai Mamichi, Understood. one of our enemies. This, we can all concentrate on fighting. Our council is at an end. You all know what you have to do. Now go! So we saw there, I did a, my main force was a bunch of cavalry, and then I had Toshie and Nagihide bringing up some infantry behind them for a little uh, more steadfast support. Oh, you of evil intent! If you get in my way, I shall not be merciful! <laughs> a very beautiful opening speech from Nobunaga, and here we go. Uh, I start off instantly by checking back <laughs> to see if there are any items. So basically I'm just going to start piling my way through the uh, through the opening of the game. So I'll start by talking about where we are. I'll say just before I start talking about the history that this uh, recording has a lot of lag in it because the the game didn't like rendering all these buildings, I don't think. And all the close-knit corridors kept all the units close together. It, it meant uh, the emulator had to work quite hard, so um, I'll just have to ignore the fact that sometimes it decides to be in half speed. Um, but let's talk about Sakai, the place we are. Sakai, as has been mentioned a couple of times, was... Uh, a semi-independent city, a bit more of a town than a city. It's um, it's like a suburb of Osaka now, so it's sort of it's not a city unto itself. It's like a district, a uh, a mall or something like that. Uh, basically, it's all manufacturing and merchant guilds. It was a very rich location, and it was semi-independent, run by these merchant councils, possibly similar to Venice. I don't really know too much about Venice, but it sounds like it's the same sort of deal. And it had, uh, yeah, some independence from the Shogun and the Emperor. Which many people didn't like, but they got away with it because they were super rich and were, were very important in manufacturing of weapons. Which uh, the Shogun needed, so he wanted to keep them on, on his side. It was quite famous because it had access to the foreign trade routes coming to Japan. So that was it. In this, uh, the Sengoku era was its main trade was... Uh, taking in foreign traders and then taking the stock inland to other trade hubs elsewhere and becoming very rich as the stock passed through. Uh, one of the key things turn. that it did was guns. Guns was its big industry, uh, very much helped by its access to foreign traders. Uh, Nobunaga, in fact, used uh, the merchants of Sakai to supply his guns earlier in the campaign. That's where he would have got them Put from. Some effort into it. They also had near. lots of Christian influence. I think lots of. They had more than the average amount of Christian influence, still very little. Um, I mentioned last time a, a missionary called Francis Xavier. Francis Xavier was here in Sakai for a time doing some, some Christian preaching in uh, around 1550. Not very successfully, but they definitely had a, a tiny bit of Christian influence going around. But uh, more important was the money. It was the richest place in Japan at the time. It was, well, flowing with money and rich people. Lots of uh, interesting people to know. And also, possibly related, it was one of the big places for tea ceremony. It was where people would learn tea ceremony. And where tea ceremony was like a, a big deal. Being able to do good tea ceremony would uh, give you some lots of social status here in Sakai. Um, possibly that's because the independence it has lends it some you kind of... Uh, the time for you to die uh, some kind of ability to attract Buddhist monks. And Buddhist monks tend to bring with them a certain amount of tea ceremony, or at least they're very uh, compatible with tea ceremony. Now is our chance. I don't really know why the Buddhist monks uh, favoured Sakai, but I, it must be something to do with the, why it was so independent. There were lots of uh, a, a very strong Buddhist influence in the town. Perhaps making, a, making up for the lack of uh, government influence, I don't know. So yes, famous for its tea and Buddhism and famous for its guns, famous for its money, and very partially famous for having uh, Christian missionaries. Uh, but the uh, the main deal with uh, Nobunaga's campaign in Sakai was that, uh, well, it depends which side of the story you believe. There are two ways of looking at the Battle of Sakai. Basically what we do know is that the events we're seeing here in the game didn't take place on the dates that the game sort of pretends they take place. So it's currently 1569 I believe in the game, or 1570. Uh, the the events of Sakai would have taken place a few years after that. It would have actually taken place after the Nobunaga Asai Asakura War, which we'll see beginning at the end of this episode. 
So aside from the slight uh, false chronology, uh, it really depends which which type of story you want to believe about Sakai. There's a sort of legendary story which could actually be true, and then there's a very generic story. I'll start by talking about the legendary story. In the legendary story, Sakai is this big merchant guild, and Nobunaga is angry at it. He's angry because they aided the Miyoshi while Miyoshi were trying to take Kyoto, and we saw that uh, in the last episode. Uh, and so he was so angry at them, he wanted to destroy Sakai completely, despite it being this big, wealthy center. Uh, but luckily, Hideyoshi Hashiba, the, uh, the true hero of the age, convinced him not to. And he said that he had a plan, so Nobunaga was going to let him try his plan to make Sakai submit to his rule. So what he basically did was Hideyoshi sent a whole ton of messengers to Sakai. And these messengers spread the word that Nobunaga was angry at Sakai and was planning to burn it to the ground. And they were freaked out by this. They were not willing to let Nobunaga take the take the city or take the town. So they prepared for a siege. They locked off the town, built fortifications and towers, and perhaps they did indeed hire mercenaries, as the game says they did. You can see I defeated the uh, the first enemy commander right here. Impossible. My skills are second to none. Despite his skills being second to none. So Sakai is prepared for war. And then what happens is Hideyoshi himself dresses up as a common man and goes into the town and starts asking around and asking them why they're so worried and why there's so much uh, hostility. And they tell him obviously that Nobunaga is coming to burn burn the town down and they, they must prepare. But Hideyoshi just laughs them off and mocks them and uh, readily informs them that they're being quite silly. Uh, so what he ends up making them believe is that by preparing for war, all they've actually done is make war inevitable, and that Nobunaga actually was going to spare them, and that the the, the thing about burning the town down was just a rumor, and they've overreacted. Uh, so then they start feeling quite bad about this, and basically Hideyoshi convinces them to send envoys to Nobunaga in order to try and just do negotiations instead of fighting it out. And this is exactly what Nobunaga wanted. So the envoys are these uh, key figures in the town, and they come to probably Honoji or Gifu. I don't know where he would have been at this stage actually. Now well chance. they come to Nobunaga regardless and he just arrests them and throws them in prison instantly and uh, giving them no chance hey, to make their case. So now he basically has hostages from Sakai. What he can say is look Sakai we have some respected townspeople, uh, your envoys that you want to save. Uh, the only way you're going to save them is if you comply with my orders and on that note uh, Hideyoshi steps in again and says okay and on the behalf of the townspeople pretends to negotiate a ransom and gets loads of the uh, the rich merchants to agree to hand over a whole ton of money uh, and surrender the town in exchange for returning the hostages. So the end result is that the town has submitted to Nobunaga, uh, no blood was spilt and all because of the genius of Hideyoshi. So that is <laughs> that's the story I like. Whether that's true, I don't know. Uh, it is uh, is cited as being true in some historical texts, but Sometimes it does it seem like a legend. It sounds like the sort of thing that happened in a legend. I mean, Hideyoshi was supposed to be very famous for his ability to convince people and come up with genius moves. So maybe it really did happen, I don't know. Uh, but of course there is the other version, and the other version is kind of more close to what we're seeing happening here in the game. The other version was just that Nobunaga wanted to capture Sakai for no particular reason, just because he wanted to control it. Uh, possibly the Miyoshi, the Miyoshi aiding thing was true as well. But he just says, I'm going to burn the town down. They say, fine, come and burn it down. And he does. He attacks the town. The citizenry basically flees and uh, leaves it abandoned. Um, but they had in fact hired a bunch of mercenaries to defend it. But no one now can just charge through them, uh, easily defeats them in a battle. And he does indeed raise the town to the ground. So that's the alternate story. Uh, well, it's close to what we're seeing in the game, and I don't know if it's true. Well, who knows? Trust in your men and fight. I like to believe the Hideyoshi story more. So let's have a look at what's actually been happening in the level. We've seen I've managed to hit through the uh, the first enemy commander, and coming up now on the second, I took quite a lot of damage, but I found quite a lot of healing areas as well. So I'm now uh, I'm still pretty good. We can see the enemy, uh, one of the enemy commanders just sitting out there, it's a, a ninja unit. I uh, decided to charge from the Nobunaga and bring Toshie for support. The thing about ninja units is they're very powerful in this game. Here he is. Nobunaga, 
I shall defeat you with the ways of old. <laughs> Indeed he shall. So here we are, it's uh, Sandayu Momoji, the trainer of Ishikawa Goemon. Yes, the ninja units have very high stats. You can see they didn't really take any damage as I attacked them. They, uh, they're very hardy. Uh, but the downside is they have lower health than they otherwise would for their rank. So even though he has quite high health, uh, if he had had a normal type of unit, he would have had tons and tons more health. Oh yeah, then Kido showed up. He was pretty easy to take on. This big open space gave me a massive advantage. I was basically doing crazy cavalry maneuvers all over the place. So I didn't even need to wait for Toshie to show up, really. You also might have noticed so far that there have been little buildings called like Merchant Guilds that have been destroying. I don't really know what that's about. I guess maybe that's representing Nobunaga, like burning down the city or something? Uh, I don't know. But you can destroy them, and they're like red on the map, implying that, that, that they're enemy buildings in some way. And a couple of them, when you destroy them, give you items. So, I don't know, I just go right ahead and do it. There doesn't seem to be any penalty for doing it, so... May as well. You can see here that I barely win this rampage. <laughs> there was just a flash of the, uh, of the rampage screen. I had a tiny bit of health left. I had to play it very cautiously with Nobunaga there. Nobunaga's pretty good in rampage because his horse has a rampage bonus, which means he doesn't get uh, like he doesn't get knocked back by attacks as much. He can continue charging through enemy attacks, which gives him uh, makes him slightly easier to use in Rampages, plus he has his awesome giant sword that he uses. He isn't particularly effective, but he looks pretty good. So there we go, Kicho finish off the second enemy Defeat commander. Does not get easier with age. <laughs> no, it does not, my friend. Very unfortunate. So that's the second enemy commander defeated, and I'm just going to uh, finish up. I actually can't reach the other side of the city at the moment, but uh, I quickly find out that there is a secret way of allowing us to get over there. So while uh, that happens, and while I go to take on Tatsuki Saito, the next enemy commander, I want to talk a little bit about how Nobunaga was treating Yoshiaki. Yoshiaki is the Shogun. We've seen him many times in cutscenes. He's the crazy, purple-hatted, white-faced man who shrieks a lot and who, uh, who basically is using Nobunaga. He's using him to regain his former power and at this stage in history he has successfully done so. Right now he is Shogun again after having spent, well not Shogun again sorry, he is Shogun after his brother the Shogun was killed and he was forced to flee the capital uh, for fearing his own life. So here we go we see I found some crazy building which did that allowing us to cross this river. Oh we might be able to cross! <laughs> Oh, that sounded like Toshi in my dad's voice. So yeah, in 1568, Yoshiaki is made the puppet shogun by Nobunaga, so Yoshiaki is pretty happy. And it doesn't really show this in the game at all, but Nobunaga was really, really nice to Yoshiaki. Yoshiaki got like an amazing deal. In the game, he's presented as being sort of selfish and almost not caring for what Nobunaga is doing for him, which may have been a little bit true, but, uh, but really... Yoshiaki was extremely grateful for Nobunaga's help, and he uh, very much believed that Nobunaga was on his side. Uh, some say that he actually came to be calling to call Nobunaga his own father because he he regarded him as such a patron to him. Very strange. So what happened was he was made shogun, and then Nobunaga left either Hideyoshi or Katsuye, depending which source you believe, in Kyoto to guard him and uh, and rule over Kyoto on his behalf to, to keep the peace because Yoshiaki had very little military influence. So it's actually going quite well for Yoshiaki but and Nobunaga built him a new palace. I was talking earlier about how he got ransom money from the Sakai citizens in the legendary version of the story. Uh, in the legendary version of that story the ransom money was almost all spent straight away building Yoshiaki's palace. So Nobunaga had had commanded the building of this new palace because the old palace was almost like destroyed, it was dilapidated uh, due to the <laughs> basically the lack of money of the old shogunate and the fact that it hadn't been used in many years. Uh, it just fallen apart because of constant chaos and fighting. So they built him a new one. Well, Nobunaga built him a new one, basically he just paid for it, possibly with some of Sakai's money. So Yoshiaki got a pretty sweet deal, he's now been made shogun, he rules the country, technically, technically rules the country, just not really. And he has a, new, a brand new palace, so he must be feeling pretty happy. But, uh, of course, what happened 
right after that is that Nobunaga started to bring charges against him because what we know really historically is that Nobunaga wanted the Shogunate for himself. He had only really made Yoshiaki Shogun as a legitimate way of going into Kyoto. He didn't really intend to leave him as Shogun. So he started bringing charges against him, like criminal charges, a lot of which may have been true. They were very strange charges. Like, there were things like uh, impersonating foreigners and things. And, Frivolously Nobunaga. spending money. Yeah, Lots of strange you. things, but. Some of them were probably true, I imagine. So Nobunaga brings all the charges against him, and basically Yoshiaki instantly starts hating him. Uh, so Yoshiaki loses faith in Nobunaga, and he flees the capital to join the Mori clan. Uh, the Mori clan has been mentioned a couple of times so far in, in The Legend of Nobunaga. Uh, I think we are eventually going to see them in the game, so I won't say anything about them now. But Yoshiaki goes to join them. Uh, not very not far in the future after this battle enemy. takes place, actually. It's slightly confusing because of the reverse chronology. Like, if the chronology of the game had been correct, it would have already happened. But in the game, this happens before the Asakura Wars, so it hasn't happened yet. It's very confusing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Here on the screen, we see for the first time Nobun argues in this wind no ability. Mercy. I was curious to see what it was. Uh, it's sort of interesting. So I use it, and then you have this like aura that appears around him and just starts knocking down enemy units and very gradually killing some of the enemy. Uh, so it's sort of interesting. I think I used it at like a bad time. This wasn't a very good place to be using it. We can see I have so many units piling into this bottleneck against the, the whole Saito forces. We can see one of Saito's uh, backup units is called Diego del... what was it? Cielo. Ready? So some foreign troops here, we're facing the first uh, foreign troops in Japan and it's something I'm quite skeptical skeptical about, sorry, that foreign troops would be in Japan. It doesn't seem like they would. I don't know whether uh, Portuguese or Spanish actually sold mercenaries to the Japanese. Uh, I know they did sell... Uh, yeah, maybe they did actually. I think they may have uh, given some mercenary matchlock troops in the early days when the Japanese uh, troops you weren't so good at using matchlocks, battle. so it became it was more common to have mercenary matchlock troops imported from other countries. But here we're seeing like knights. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but the enemy are uh, they're like knights in shining armor with Zweihander swords, which seems a little bit less likely to me. I don't know. I charge Nagahide Niwa here, intending to do a rampage just for fun. Charge him into the blob of units. I think I actually. Uh, Failed to defeat the enemy commander in this rampage. We'll see in just one second. I did fail. A superb effort, a but it didn't say glorious victory, which means I didn't defeat the enemy commander. I think I almost died actually, and I had to just run away for most of that rampage. But luckily, we've almost beaten the uh, the enemy units on the Saito group of the just enemy. And that will be three of four enemy commanders down. And Sakai almost in our hands. Luckily we haven't set it on fire, no like in the second historical house. tale. I did decide to bring Hideyoshi to this battle purely to honour the uh, historical tale. I guess there was a small chance that him being here could have triggered some sort of event in the game, like as, a, as an homage to the possibly historical events, but there, there wasn't really anything. Or at least I don't think there was anything. Uh, we'll see right at the end of the battle that there could have been something. Now Tatsuyoki is in <laughs> big trouble. I do lots of very poor charge moves hitting my own troops, unfortunately. You see, I charged in and then got hit by a known volley of my arrows from Nagihide. Making very liberal use of healing throughout this level as well. Trying to keep all my troop counts high. What I don't know is, what, is whether losing troops and then healing them back damages your score. But at, the end, at the end of each level, part of your score is, is determined by how many troops you lost. And the question is... Does that count how many troops you I'm lost or how many troops you lost compared to how many troops you could have at the end? So for example, you could lose thousands of troops in the battle, but end with full troops if you waited around and kept using heal abilities. So I don't really know. <laughs> now one enemy generals remains on the battlefield. It's time for me to head north and take on this Amalia Van Kyrie character. It's sort of uh, annoying. The, the game calls her America Van Kyrie, whereas I am... I feel like it should be pronounced Amalia Van Kaya. I don't know. It feels like the the game does a phonetic pronunciation, whereas since it is, she's supposed to be Spanish or something, you'd think it would have a more romantic pronunciation. But who knows? 
So if you can see here on the map, there's this weird bit off to the right. And I'm sort of curious to investigate that, so I order Toshie to, to do that whilst I use Nobunaga as a distraction and pull the enemy command away. But of course that was too ambitious because I get here and discover that there are two other units. So I decided to charge Joachim... <laughs> what's that? Joachim D. Almeida, sorry. I just read it. He actually goes down pretty damn easy. So here she is. Hero or villain? A very skimpily armoured enemy commander, pretty hot. And she actually has some sort of like London accent, it's strangely British. And it's very cute, all her troops have the uh, the little mon on their backs. Uh, I don't know why, <laughs> why they decided to leave them in for the uh, the foreign troops, they wouldn't have had them. I don't know. I guess they just thought it would be easier to code or something. Well strangely, some of the Japanese troops don't have mons upon further inspection. Oh, I, I don't know. I guess it's, it's just sort of weird. They really got us with that one. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that, but the uh, Thomas Rodriguez was like, "Oh, they really got us with that one." Sounded like he was pretty drunk. And there was a little item in the corner here. Didn't stop to see what it was though, because I had to charge back into the action. So I'm still pretty uh, enthusiastic about bypassing this battle and going down that corridor off to the side. I get a super effective bow attack. Probably gonna hit my own men. Oh no, I actually hit the enemy. Just did no damage. Uh, you can see Amalia has an attack bonus, see? so I use Berate. And that's gonna not only cancel her attack bonus, but give her an attack you debuff as well. Like Pretty damn good. <laughs> and then Nobunaga absolutely annihilates those two units. So I decide now's the time to go off and check out that extra area. I pull off Hideyoshi Hashiba to go and uh, break through these gates and see what's down here. The first chamber has nothing in it. Pretty disappointing, so I had big expectations for the second chamber. It better have an item or something in it. Quickly Victory switch back to do some healing. I know it's near the end, but uh, as I said, I don't know whether your final uh, uh, troop count no counts towards I your fear. score at all, so I like to keep it high towards the end. So now I'm racing against the clock. I have to go and check out this area before Amalia gets killed by the other four units that are uh, really eating into her. There's something there. Okay, let's just go towards it and pick it up. Ah, oh, yeah, it didn't work. Uh, basically, she died. <laughs> just probably picked up whatever that was. It's no place for her to die, mates. So she's right out of here. Sakai has fallen. Kinai is now under my control. Let us celebrate! As I said last time, Kinai is a word used to refer to the five or six provinces around Kyoto. The game just doesn't explain it at all. Just to confuse the player. <laughs> and look at this, guys. Uh, Something went uh, seriously wrong, and the uh, the results screen was was totally glitched up. You, it, if you look very carefully, you can see I actually did get rank S. I got uh, 365 points, uh, so I got whatever the prizes were. You can just about see them here. It's like this uh, this necklace, the iron Rajuzu, the ten Moku T ball rogues helmet. Uh, looks okay. I think that's Tatsuki Saito's helmet actually, and uh, s s a primer and this rifle unit. Pretty sweet. So. Uh, I've got a new set of guns to play with. Maybe see if Mitsuhide Akechi wants to play around with them since he's the only gun general. <laughs> and I would be getting levels up, but uh, as far as I can tell, I'm just getting a whole bunch of names. Uh, I think what's happened is every single thing the game could possibly display on the screen <laughs> was being displayed at once. So that's an interesting uh, interesting look at all the, the palette, the palette of images that the game draws from. So let's see what sort of cutscenes we get. Go ahead and kill me. I have no fear of death. I just can't tell what accent she has. You're asking me to join with you? It's like American, but English you know, like and possibly America. Spanish. I don't come cheap. Oh. Really? <laughs> you mean that's not enough? Come now, Lady Kicho is right there. <laughs> I mean, I know Lord Nobunaga likes women, but you idiot. Just what is in that thick skull of yours? Our lord is buying her fighting skill. Yep, fighting skill. And that pretty hot armor. So here we go, we're going to see what uh, the new Shogun is up to. <laughs> come on, come on. Come you know on, you want to. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a hard time with these girls. I am the new Shogun. They don't this seem too convinced. Everything is mine. Everything is mine. <laughs> you can help me celebrate fully. <laughs> I have news, my lord. The Oda army has triumphed at Sakai. The foreign troops have surrendered to our banner. 
Oh, they did? Well, that's good. <laughs> Not fast, really. I imagine they couldn't have won without you. <sighs> Wasn't even there, mate. Not so, my lord. Oda already has one to match me. You can see the background here, out the right. Look very carefully. It I don't know if you saw it, but one of the enemy commanders we were just facing is sitting lord, there in the background of this lead. scene. So, Wait, <laughs> I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Maybe this is trying to represent the fact that Yoshiaki is plotting against us. You still remember, right? The promise you made to me? Of course. The promise. Very good. Then do it quickly! I hear that Asakura is headed for the capital already! Asakura? Coming here? Your lordship? Yeah, yeah. So, there's a little bit of a non-historical way of starting the Asakura War. I'll talk about that in a second, very briefly. So Amalia Van Kuye Kree is now in our forces. Pretty sweet. Nobunaga had established a new order. An order he hoped would bring peace to the world. Yay. Probably not true. However, his lordship Yoshiaki, who controlled the shogunate, withdrew support from Nobunaga and plotted his demise. So what I talked about earlier is he now happening. Yoshikage Asukura of Echizen to the capital of Kyoto. This fact is brought to the attention of Nobunaga by Mitsuhide Akechi. Curious that you say this fact, because that's not factually correct as to what happened historically. Coming to the capital? Asakura? That's right. <laughs> that little exchange there was so pointless. Like, it didn't need to show Mitsuhide, Mitsuhide saying that's right, or Nobunaga being surprised. I don't Let's know. Let's review our strategy. I guess they just made that cutscene and felt like throwing it in for five seconds. So chapter 4 hasn't actually ended, even though I thought it My would. Lord, this is the chapter 4 continues situation. because the Asakura army has showed up and we have to do something about it. Let's see where it is on the map. It's up there in Echizen. So pretty uh, pretty correctly placed actually on this map. Echizen is up there and Asakura. I think they're in Echizen. They may have been a little bit to the, uh, to the left. But <laughs> I don't know. Arguing the fine details. So we saw there the game claimed that Yoshiaki the Shogun turned on Nobunaga by summoning Asakura to Kyoto to oust him. Uh, so that's what the game wants us to believe. Uh, one thing the game has correct is the date <laughs> that it's 1570. That is when the Asakura War began. But of course what really happened, as with many things in the game, is that Nobunaga was being a little bit of a bastard. Basically Nobunaga had secured Kyoto and was feeling pretty good about his forces. So he just built up a massive army really quickly and decided to invade Asakura. And the pretext he had for that invasion was that Asakura didn't recognize Yoshiaki as the new Shogun. So he wanted to uh, to go and punish them for that. So in many ways, the historical war was actually helping Yoshiaki. Like, Nobunaga was being nice to him by invading Asakura. Uh, but there's there are complications. There are complications basically because... Asakura is allied to the Azai clan, which I think I mentioned when we encountered the Azai clan in the past, and I expect we'll see, once we uh, hit the next episode of Legend of Nobunaga, that we're going to have some fairly large, uh, awkward feelings between us and our allies, the Azai clan. The other people who should be helping us historically are the Tokugawa clan. They were there at the beginning of the Asakura war, so hopefully they'll be there in the next stage. The reason they could be there is because Tokugawa's actual territory was, was pretty safe at this stage. Tokugawa's territory is to the east of Nobunaga's, guarding Nobunaga's eastern flank. But their main enemy was the Imagawa, who are still uh, still hanging around over there. You'll remember the Imagawa from back in Chapter 2 were, were our main enemy. They're still, they're still down there. They're still hanging around. They've still got all those troops, but it was Ieyasu Tokugawa was keeping them in check. But now, the Imagawa have been invaded by Takeda, at around this point in history. So the Tokugawa army was free to, to go and wander around in Oda's territory and, and help him out a little bit. So we should be seeing them at the beginning of the next part. So that's all for now in The Legend of Nobunaga. We have successfully gained Sakai slightly out of sequence, but uh, <laughs> who cares? And now we're going to see the consequences of Nobunaga attempting to use his alliance with Azai to protect his northern flank. Will he giving will his sister Uichi, Nobunaga's sister, remember, is married to the lord of the Azai clan. Will his sister Uichi be able to keep their alliance together? Or will it all fall apart? And I'll give you a clue it will all fall apart. See you next time on The Legend of Nobunaga.